January, February, April, March. Again, January, February, April, March. Again, January, February, April, March. Go. January, April, February, March. You are not listening. January, February, April, March. Let's take an imaginary time machine and go back to the fourth grade. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that our maturity levels were not that high. After all, I found laughter in things that other people didn't. In this case, being my aunt, who I'll refer to as Amanda. It was a long day of going back to school shopping with Amanda and my older brother, Tony. On the way home, she began telling me how she expected nothing but the best for me going into fifth grade. How well can a kid do if she doesn't know the months of the year? I said. I thought this was a joke, but to her, this was no laughing matter. It was now a painful lecture that left me in tears. When we arrived home, she sent my older brother inside, but left me in the car and didn't let me get out until I knew the months of the year in order. She yelled at them in my face and only got even louder and louder every time I made a mistake. Once the damage was done, but her goal was accomplished, she sent me inside. My face full of tears caught my grandmother's attention. Ariana, are you okay? What happened? Mom, I, she needed to learn somehow, Amanda interrupted. To this day, in Amanda's eyes, it does not matter how much I cry. She just wants me to go to college. It does not matter how much I hate her. She just wants me to go to college. And surely it does not matter how happy I am. She just wants me to go to college. The first 10 seconds of my life was placed into the arms of a 14-year-old girl, which welcomed in some more arms of support. Some needed, some wanted, yet others forced. My grandmother taking me in as her own, just as wanted as it was needed. My aunt's constant control my life's every single turn, nothing but forced. I guess you can say my mom was a black sheep of the family. Having a kid at the age of 14, gang affiliation which led to drugs and alcohol, expelled from multiple schools. Amanda, my mom's sister, holds a very high title in our family and nobody questions her. This high title includes being the first one to graduate from Notre Dame University and attend college. Uh, she now runs her own business and sticks around to help support the family. She has helped pay for my back to school supplies, my clothes. She places me in good schools. She's paid for my school dances, paid for my East Coast trip in the eighth grade that cost a couple thousand. And most recently, my quinceanera. The thing is, my family constantly asks me why I resent her so much. Do you know how different your life would be without her support? She can pay for things that we can't, yet you're so rude to her. Ariana, you wouldn't have had that quinceanera. Be grateful. The thing is, her money can't buy my love. Her money can't wash away all the painful memories she's left me. It can't take away all those nights I cried myself to sleep feeling pathetic. All the times I was almost put on antidepressants should just simply go away because she bought me things? No, that is not me. She might have bought me things, but she causes me so much pain. In her eyes, she just wants what's best for me. But let me ask you this. How can pressuring me to the point where I break help me? How could have yelling all those months in my face have helped me? Yes, I learned, but that was not the right way. And now, I'm not gonna tell her that I don't know what a verb or noun is. Wanting what's best for me includes filling up my schedule with things that will look good for college, minus what I actually want to do. I didn't want to competitively swim for five years. I didn't want to take three AP classes my sophomore year. I just want to be a kid 
but she won't let me. I tried so hard to be perfect for her that I lost myself. Amanda took care of my uncles, Anthony and Jacob. She pushed them, she got them into college where they now live successful lives. This is her goal with me, except one thing. I am the only one who has stood up for myself. I am the only one who questions her words and decisions, which she would argue to be best for me. When I entered middle school, I was so excited to be a teen and see what middle school had in store. Little did I know this package deal came along with my aunt's supervision. My first ever report card was a 3.0. And let me tell you this, it was for sure my last. I do thank my aunt for pushing me on my grades because I know nobody else would have. But I do not thank her for the things that she told me. She constantly asked me, how could you have gotten those type of grades? I apologized and I told her I would work harder. And I did. I got that 3.8 that next semester, next report card. It still wasn't enough. I apologized again. And then she told me, Ariana, imagine how much easier I'd be on you if you got a 4.0. This definitely convinced me. And I did it. I got that 4.0. Yet nothing changed. My grandmother was proud of me. Amanda wasn't. Or at least that's how she makes me feel. Ariana, make sure you're home after school. But Amanda, I wanted to get ice cream with my friends after school. How? Walking by yourselves? No way. You're coming back home and that's it. But I have all A's. Great. Good for you. Now be home after school. No matter what I did then or what I do now, I will never be good enough for her. I will never meet her eye to eye. As I was prohibited from getting ice cream after a long day after school with my friends. I, I can't stay out past nine. I can't go to sleepovers. And I can't even pick my own classes as I'm instructed to give her my articulation card as soon as I get it. No matter what I actually want to do. And so many other things. However, one day in eighth grade, I grew tired of it and I stayed after school to study. But instead, I went to Foster's with my friends after school and I bought that root beer float. And I just had a whole bunch of laughter and happiness. I walked back to school and she picked me up. How was studying? Do you get it now? Studying was great and I get everything now. Little did she know what I had meant. Because what I truly meant is that I now knew what life was like outside of the textbooks and the walls in my room. And I loved it. She may never meet me eye to eye when it comes to friends, but at least I know that they're, for, they're there for me. Middle school was as great as I could make it. Then came high school. Again, I was so excited for high school experiences, the more freedom that I had been promised, yet this is where it all started. The never-ending stress on my grades, playing sports that I didn't want to, it broke me. Her idea of constantly stressing me out was making me stronger, but she never realized how strong I truly am. People at school know better than to mess with me because I stand up for myself. This can be something as small as the juniors in my physics class last year that they were trying to take my homework. Being as small as I am, I said, no, pick up that pencil and do something. I am now friends with those juniors, and they love me because they know that I will say, I will stand up for myself. Even now, people at school always ask me for my advice because they know that I will say things as they are, not what you'd like to hear. <laughs> Amanda simply does not like my share of opinion, and she was not on my side when I wanted to do track. As a little girl, I was not allowed to play any boy sports because I was seen as being frail and too weak. Uh, but I love running, and I was getting tired of volleyball and swim. So I joined. However, it didn't take long before I got hurt. It started off with shin splits, a very common overuse injury. I knew that I was getting hurt, so I took a day off from sports. I went home, I iced my legs, and I just rested. 
Amanda saw me and told me how stupid I was being by playing a sport that was not meant for me. She told me how dumb it was for me to stay home and not run. Amanda, I'm hurt. Yes, you are, because running is not for you, Ariana. Hearing this caused me to return before I was ready, and this only meant more injuries. I had overstrained shoot splits in my right leg and perineal tendonitis on my left foot. Scary, I know. I was walking on pain. I was forced to quit early. I was forced to quit the season early on a doctor's note. And on top of this, she didn't let me quit volleyball. My school week went from school to track two to three hours after. I got home, only had an hour and 30 minutes to do homework, eat, relax, volleyball later that night, and I went back home and I was exhausted. My injuries were serious, but in her eyes, it was all my fault for being stupid. After all my academic accomplishments, trying to do things that make me happy, again, I was not enough. Sophomore year came and she never quits. I never wanted AP classes, three AP classes. I never wanted to play high school volleyball. And I for sure never wanted to lose as my spare time, as I had found that that's the only time I had to relax was gone. I decided to join cross country. And before you guys may be thinking I'm crazy, I love running. <laughs> but she never stopped. Your body is incapable of running. Your flat feet will only get you hurt more and more. Why can't you just listen to me? Running makes me happy, and I want to be happy. And if I get hurt, so be it. And surely enough, I got hurt. <laughs> I got a stress fracture on my left leg and had to quit the season early a couple months, a couple weeks before one of our biggest races. That's me going to, wait, where's the? Sorry. <laughs> well, I went to Quinceañera in the boot, which I thought was funny, but I was being stupid. I was very tired of being called dumb and unreasonable, so I actually didn't get my stress fracture treated till two months after it happened. I knew that if I told my family I was hurt, no one would have stood up for me. It was one of the most painful things I have ever experienced. Walking around the house as if nothing hurt, putting a smile on my face when I was actually just dying inside. I finally told the doctor the truth, and that's when I got the x-rays taken, and he concluded my stress fracture. You can only imagine my aunt's face when I walked in for stomach pains and came out in a medical boot. Usually, I would have cared what she ha would have thought of me. Instead, I just ignored everything that she told me. I healed up, and I began running again. Now I'm in lacrosse, which I was told that I was going to die in if I played, because I would get hit in the head and die. But I'm in lacrosse, and I only have two AP classes, and I'm training for the upcoming cross country season. I may not have the 4.5, which she had craved, but I have a 4.1 that I am very happy with. Is she happy with me? No. Is my family happy with me? No. But am I happy with me? Yes. For once, I finally am. Thank you.